Hi, and welcome to my channel. I'm Franny Loves Food. Some of you probably already know me from my Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook pages. In today's video, I'm gonna be going through all the steps I take to make my easy Neapolitan style pizza dough. This is one of my most popular pizza dough recipes. I use a similar recipe for my nonna style pizza dough, which I'll do another separate video on, but I just wanna go through the different things that I use that make the pizza dough better. And there's certain things that you do when making pizza dough that just make the difference, um, like the type of flour, the amount of water, um, and the process in which you go through to get to that nice, light, fluffy, crispy Neapolitan crust. So today I'm gonna to be showing you the different flours that I use to make my Neapolitan style pizza dough. Now, it's all, these are all double O flours. Double zero flour, doppio zero is what Italian people call it. And so there are different brands at different price points. So you do what's suitable for you. Uh, this is more of a, a better price point. This is called Anna Napoletana. This is actually made by Cento, the company that makes the tomatoes. And this is the organic version, and this is about $4 for 2.2 pounds. So that's not bad as far as double zero flour goes. This is on the higher end. This is Caputo. Uh, this is a great flour, uh, no question. The pizza masters use this flour, but it comes at a cost. Uh, I paid for this 2.2 pounds, I paid about $6 for this bag. So it's a little pricey, not a lot of flour. Um, but very, very high quality. Then you have your King Arthur Double Zero flour, which is also excellent and also a little pricey. This is a larger bag. This is about three pounds. And a three pound bag could range, but depending on the supermarket, you could pay between seven and eight dollars for this particular bag. So double O flour is what's important. That's what's gonna give you that light, airy, crispy crust and it's because of the amount of protein inside the flour. So you don't need to know too much about that. It's the amount of protein in this flour is between bread flour and AP flour. So the more protein a flour has, the more stretchy a dough it will create. So this is the perfect percentage for Neapolitan style pizza because you want that thin crust, you don't want it to be dense, but you want it to stretch and not break. So this is perfect for, for this particular type of pizza. And honestly, I use double O flour when I use, when I make any kind of pizza because it just, it's a great texture and I really enjoy it. The other thing I wanna talk about is the scale. A lot of people are resistant to a scale. They always want me to convert my um, recipe into cups and I don't do that. And it's not because I don't want to do that for you. It's because I wouldn't measure my flour in cups. It's not precise. Uh, you can measure it on the, you can pack it in and it's heavier and it's not the right measurement. Cups are not accurate. I know we use cups in America and not a lot of people have a scale, but I promise you it's the best investment if you're gonna be making pizza dough or bread and you enjoy that, having a scale is invaluable. So I'm gonna place the link to the scale uh, that I use in the caption below and it's i think it's about 20 bucks it's not a huge investment and it makes a huge difference in your pizza and bread making so the method i'm going to be using today to make the easy neapolitan style dough which is basically what i consider to be a no need dough you needing for very very little short amount of time is something called auto lice which i learned in making sourdough bread what i do is i mix all the ingredients together and i let them sit covered for an hour what this is gonna do is it's gonna develop its gluten on its own, and then you only need to knead it for a couple of minutes just to get a smooth ball, and then it's ready to rise, which is called the bulk rise, the first time. So I'm gonna show you that in the next shot. So I start off by measuring out my flour. Like I said, I'm using double zero flour. In this particular video, I'm using the King Arthur brand. I'm gonna measure out my flour, add my salt, all on the scale, Give it a mix, set that aside. Now I'm gonna proof my yeast in warm water, teaspoon of yeast, and I'm gonna feed the yeast with a little bit of honey. Give that a mix and let it sit for about 10 minutes until it's a little foamy. You can also use sugar to feed the yeast if you don't have honey. 
Once it's foamy, I'm gonna pour it right into that flour and salt mixture. And I'm gonna use my Danish whisk, or you could use your hands or a wooden spoon. Just give it a mix, make sure that all the flour is hydrated. So what I do is I start off with the Danish whisk and then I switch to my hands because it just becomes too difficult. And you just wanna squeeze it and make sure that everything is mixed well. You don't have to knead it. It doesn't have to look like anything right now, just a very shaggy mess, basically. So now that the flour is all incorporated, I'm just gonna cover it and let it sit for an hour. This is what it looks like after an hour. So I'm just gonna scrape it out of the bowl and knead it for a couple of minutes. You wanna flour your surface. So once I've scraped it out of the bowl, I just kind of bring it together into a bowl and I'm gonna lift it off my silicone mat, add a little bit of flour and then a little on top so it doesn't stick to my hands and I'm gonna start kneading. So when you're kneading, you do not wanna use the tips of your fingers. You wanna use either the heel of your hand or your knuckles. Or in my case, both. I kind of alternate between the heel of my hand and my knuckles, and I just continue to turn it 180 degrees and pull it in towards the center. Now that I've got a smooth ball, I just wanna pull it towards me a little bit just to get a nice tight skin. And then I like to give it the little poke test to see if it bounces back, perfect. Olive oil in a bowl, add your dough in there, make sure it's all coated, cover and let it sit for one to two hours. So what I'm gonna do after the first rise, I'm gonna divide the dough into three equal pieces, okay? It doesn't need to be exact. It could range from 225 grams to 260 grams per ball. Just make sure they're pretty even so all the pizzas come out the same size. My pizzas usually come out to about a 14 inch round. It's a little bigger than a traditional Neapolitan style pizza, but I have a family and more pizza for us. It's an extra slice. So uh, once I've divided the, the dough, I'm going to refrigerate it. Now, I'm refrigerating it because I'm not usually using it immediately. If you're gonna use it immediately, then you don't need to refrigerate it. You could just let it sit for 30 minutes and then you could start stretching your pizza. But usually I make it in the morning so I'm gonna put it in the fridge for anywhere between five to seven hours till I get to it that night. And then I take it right out of the fridge, maybe about 30 minutes before I'm about to use it. And then even if the dough is still cold, you could still sort of stretch it out. And I'm gonna show you in the next shot how I stretch it out. Um, and it's perfect, even if it's a little cold. So you can actually leave it up to 24 hours in the fridge. So if you wanna make it the night before, you can let it sit till the next day and make your pizza that way too. Or sometimes I freeze it. So let's say I'm, I know I'm gonna have a busy Friday. We usually have pizza on Fridays. I'll make it during the week. I'll let it rise the first time, punch it down, make my dough balls, and then I will wrap it in saran wrap and put it in the freezer. And then when I'm ready to use it, take it out that morning and let it you know, re-rise or come to room temperature. Uh, and then it's ready to go. So now two hours have passed and it looks gorgeous. It's all bubbly and puffy and I'm just going to punch it down. It's so satisfying to watch that. And you just want to gather it together. And now I'm going to make my three dough balls. So I use my scale to do this just so I can get three equal size balls or as close as I can get them. I usually like to cover my scale in saran wrap. It just makes it easier. And now I'm gonna to try to eyeball cutting the same size pieces of dough. Sometimes I'm right on the money and sometimes I'm really off. In this particular instance, I'm definitely off. You can tell that the first size ball is much smaller than the other two. So I'm just gonna weigh them out and cut pieces off and add to the other piece just to make them all even. And I think the misconception that people have is that you can't really handle the dough too much. You can in this case. You don't have to worry about, you know, oh no, now I can't cut that piece off. I'm going to deflate the dough. It's fine because it's going to rise again. Whether you put it in the refrigerator or let it sit for 30 minutes, it will puff up again. So I keep playing with these weights because I'm very particular. I want them to be the same. Uh, you don't have to be that particular, but I was just showing you how I go about doing that. Now I'm gonna take one piece of the dough, pull the four corners in, and then just start to work it with my hand by tucking my hand under 
and getting a nice tight skin, just like that. This motion will help you smooth the dough out, or you can do what I'm doing here, lift it up and just pull it underneath and then close the seam at the bottom and give it a little spin like that. And you have a beautiful little dough ball. And I'm just gonna show you how I do that with the next two. And this part is gonna take practice. Handling dough takes practice. And once you get the hang of it, it's so satisfying. I love doing it. Now that I formed my three dough balls, I have a pizza proofing container. I'm gonna add some flour to the bottom. And then I add my dough balls in and add some more flour on top. Now, if you don't have this particular container, you can use a plastic container with a lid. You can put them on a baking sheet with saran wrap on top. Just make sure that they're covered and they don't form a hard skin. That's what's important. And now these are gonna go into the fridge for the day and I'll see them when I'm ready to make pizza. Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about is the tomatoes that I use. Now there's a lot of debate about whether or not you should cook your pizza sauce, not cook your pizza sauce. I do not cook my pizza sauce. Uh, it's very rare, unless I'm doing like a Chicago style pizza, then I will cook the pizza sauce. But otherwise for Neapolitan style pizza, you put it on there raw and it will cook in the oven. So I either use strained tomatoes, which are like the Pomi brand, this is, you know, like an Italian brand, or I will use whole San Marzano's that you crush or puree yourself with an immersion blender. Very simple recipe. There is absolutely nothing to it. Salt, pepper, fresh basil, olive oil, mix it. No garlic, no oregano, none of what that. Neapolitan style pizza is very simple and it makes the tomato shine. You get that nice bright tomato flavor the acidity of the tomato, that's what you're looking for. You're not trying to kill the acidity, you wanna taste that. So this happens to be a ShopRite brand that I use and it's DOP, San Marzano's, it's got the symbol on it and um, it's just a great brand, but any kind of San Marzano tomatoes, just make sure that they're DOP. You don't wanna be paying a San Marzano price for something that's not really San Marzano and a lot of them are not really San Marzano's. So that's, Simple tomato sauce, Neapolitan style, four ingredients, you're done. So now I'm gonna work on my pizza sauce. Like I said, very simple. I'm using the Pomi strained tomatoes, salt, pepper, olive oil, and fresh basil. And I'll also do this a few hours before I'm gonna make my pizza and let it sit just so that the basil infuses that tomato. Now I'm using frozen basil from my garden uh, that's why it looks like that. I grew it last year and then I have so much of it that I freeze it. And it smells just like fresh basil. It's amazing and I have fresh basil all winter. The other thing I want to talk about is the tips and tricks that you can do to make sure you have restaurant quality pizza in your house. So few things. You need a pizza stone or a pizza steel. Very important. You're not going to get that crispy crust under that pizza if you don't have a preheated pizza stone. And what do I mean by preheated? Preheated means you're going to put that stone in the oven. I keep my steel. I actually have two steels on the bottom rack of my oven. They're always there. You're going to preheat your oven for one hour at 500 degrees Fahrenheit. That steel is going to be piping hot, the minute that, pit, that pizza hits the stone, it's gonna sizzle and you're gonna see it start to rise and puff up. 
you know, that nice little cornicione, which is the crust around the Neapolitan pizza, it's going to start bubbling up and it's a beautiful sight. So it's really important that you preheat your stone. If you're doing it on an outdoor pizza uh, oven, same, you're still going to have to preheat it. You want to make sure the stone is super hot before you uh, launch your pizza. So launching your pizza is another thing we want to talk about. A lot of people are like, well, my pizza sticks. And when I go to, you know, launch it, all the toppings go flying off and it starts melting and the smoke alarms go off and <laughs> everything is burning, which has happened to me before. So I've learned from many a mistake and I'm going to teach you how to prevent that from happening. First of all, do not let that pizza crust sit on the peel for a very long time, because what's going to happen is moisture is going to get under there and the pizza, if it sticks at any point in the pizza, when you go to launch it, it's going to snag on the peel and all the toppings are going to go flying off. So you don't want that to happen. So what you want to do is when you're ready to make the pizza, you've got to be ready. You have to have all your toppings around you. Put the uh, semola rimacinata, which is semola flour, same flour used to make pasta. Put that on your peel and then you're going to place your pizza on the peel. That's it. You got to go, go, go. So put the sauce on there, mozzarella on there, whatever toppings you're going to put on there. Don't make it too heavy because that's going to make it stick to the peel. And then you want to shake it so that you know the pizza is moving before you go to launch it into the oven. So that's, that's going to take practice. I'm not going to say, you know, your toppings aren't going to go flying probably in the beginning they will, but just know that it's a fast process. Don't let it sit there and walk away and, you know, let it accumulate moisture underneath. It's the worst thing you can do. And it's the most frustrating thing when you make this beautiful pizza. And then when you go to launch it, everything's everywhere. And I promise you, I wasn't always good at launching pizzas into the oven. I've had many a massive failure and smoke alarm go off. I promise you, once you get the hang of it, it's the only way you're going to want to make pizza, unless you're making nonna style pizza, which is in a pan and also very good and delicious in its own right. But you're going to make a few mistakes, but if you use my method and you work quickly, I promise you, you can launch it and you're going to look like a professional pizzaiolo. And now the moment of truth, stretching our pizza out. Flour your surface really well. Place your dough ball down. See how nice and puffy it is? You're going to start pressing in the center. Don't touch the edges. And you're going to use your fingertips and keep working your way around the pizza to create that nice crust. Now, I like to pop those bubbles because they will burn in the oven. But if you like that crispy char, you can leave them. And then once I'm done with my fingertips, I'm going to lift it up, not touching the crust. I'm just going to have gravity stretch it out for me. Then if I want to stretch it out a little more, I'm going to take it onto the, my knuckles, not my fingers. You don't want to pierce the dough and just slowly stretch and turn the dough and let gravity do its work. Now that I've stretched it out to the width I like, I'm going to take my wooden peel and add lots of semola rimacinata, which is the same flour you use to make pasta. Spread it out with your hands, make sure it's all over the peel. And now I'm going to add my pizza crust on top before I add any toppings. Now when you see pizza being made in Napoli, they put the sauce and the cheese on the countertop and then they drag that pizza onto the peel, but we are not the pros that they are and this is an easier way to do it. So now using a spoon, I'm gonna add that pizza sauce on. Just make sure you coat it well and you go around. Don't touch the crust, obviously. And you also don't wanna drown it in sauce. Then I'm gonna add on my mozzarella. Today I'm using some fresh mozzarella that I dried with a paper towel. You don't want the mozzarella to have too much water content or release too much water because it will result in a soggy crust. So I'm just gonna tear it with my hands and this is up to you. You can put as much or as little as you want. Now 
Now I'm just gonna give it a drizzle of olive oil and into the oven it goes. But before I do that, I'm gonna give it the shake test. Okay, so here I am shaking, it's moving, we're good to go. Into the oven at 500 degrees Fahrenheit for about 10 minutes and you have this beautiful pizza, which I then add some grated cheese on top while it's still hot. The grated cheese just adds a nice sharp bite. And there you have it, easy Neapolitan style pizza at home. I promise you, you can do this too. So let's give it a cut and take a look what it looks like on the inside. I've got my trusty pizza scissor. Easiest way to cut pizza, my friends. This crust is so light and crispy and airy. It's just so good. Try this recipe on your next family pizza night and I promise you it will not disappoint. The ingredients and the link to the recipe will be in the caption of this video. So I hope you found this video helpful. I'm so happy to come over to YouTube and really get into the specifics of what I do in the more complicated recipes like pizza dough and bread making. If you followed me from my other platforms, you know I love to make bread. You know that pizza is my favorite thing to make. I'm a huge sourdough baker. So for me to be able to teach you guys what I've learned over the years, uh, it's just, I'm so excited to start this journey on YouTube. And this is my first video specifically made for YouTube. The other posts are from my other platforms just for you to get to know me, but this is the first. So welcome. If you're subscribed, thank you so much for being here. If you haven't subscribed, please like and subscribe. And hopefully we can cook some delicious things together. Some Italian, some not so Italian, some bread, some pizza, just a little bit of everything, some baking, some sweets. I'm looking forward to all of it. So thank you so much. Subscribe, subscribe, and I will see you on the next video. Ciao, my friends.